spotlight myself and then yay okay so we're gonna start in a down dog um and if you have your blocks just have them they'll be great to have um but you don't really need them um and you can start the playlist at any time um but yeah so we'll be in a down dog so find your down dog hand shoulder width distance apart knees bent feet hips width distance apart and just notice what it's like to be here it's probably for your first down dog of the day take a few pedals take a few movements and then bring your body forward to a plank pose. Cool. So just measuring it out, finding your length, and then bend your knees, stick your butt up, downward facing dog. Cool. Take a few more pedals here, just moving things around. Feel free to shake anything, move your arms, all that good stuff. And then on your next inhale, you're gonna bring both heels over to the right Bring yourself a little bit over to the right and just kind of make a rainbow with your body, sticking your butt up a little bit more in this like twist. Chin is coming up under your left armpit. And then come back to your center down dog. And then same thing, other side, bring your heels over to the left. Kick your butt up, chin comes to your armpit. And then come back to center. Find your down dog, feel free to just keep moving. No need to like make this formal yet. We'll come back to down dog a lot today, so don't worry. And when you're ready, just place your knees down, untuck your toes, and come into all fours. Cool. So from here, find your form, hands under shoulders, knees under hips, tops of the feet down. And then we're going to take a little bit of a choreographic cat cow thingy. So you're going to take one circle to the right. Come back to center, one circle to the left, come back to center, and then take four cat cows. So inhale, arch, exhale, round, inhale, arch, exhale, round. Then another circle to the right, come back to center, circle to the left, come back to center, inhale, arch, exhale, round, inhale, arch, exhale, round. And then keep doing this on your own time, just beginning to open up the body, giving a little bit of structure to the movement. A lot of the stuff we'll do today is pretty flowy. So if you can try to imagine that you're on like a model photo shoot set of sorts and you have a fan blowing in your face, that is how you should feel <laughs> when you're doing all this stuff. Cool. Take one more round and then we'll all meet in center. Taking anything that feels good. And then once we're all at a neutral spine, you're gonna come up onto your fingertips and then you're gonna tuck your toes and you're gonna do the exact same thing. So circling to the right and then circling to the left and then cat cow, cat cow. On your own breath. Take it as fast or as slow as you want. You can even walk your fingertips out a little bit more if you wanna really move into it more. You can feel kind of spidery as you do this. Feel free to close your eyes, imagining wind from any place, a fan, a beach, a big gust coming from anywhere just blowing on you as you're doing this. And take one more round. And notice how the bottoms of your feet are feeling, beginning to open them up. And once you finish that round, come back to your hands underneath your shoulders, tops of the feet down, and then flip your wrists around 180 degrees. And you guessed it, same thing this way. So circle to the right, circle to the left, and then cat cow, cat cow. So we're just switching up the way the hands are moving just to get them a little bit more open and make sure your 
Elbows are slightly bent, nothing's locked out. And feel free to customize how you take your circles or your cat cows. You can take any sort of circles with your head or make a circle bigger or smaller with just your hips or something. Rolling your shoulders around. Whatever feels nice, you can wag your tail side to side. And take one more. Cool. And then we'll all meet in a neutral spine. Hands come straight underneath your shoulders and just ground them down. Awesome. From here, plant them out about a palm grip, tuck the toes, lift the knees, and come back into your downward facing dog. Great. So from here, our wrists and our arms should feel a little bit more open. And keep pedaling it out. Keep feeling that free movement. No need to be stagnant today that much. And then begin to soften it a little bit. You can still take a little few bends as we do anything in the next like first half of class. And then step your right foot a footprint forward. Have a slight bend in both knees. Butt is still sticking up. Hips are still square. Yeah. And just take a little few sways forward and back. Feel free to bend a little bit less or a little bit more into the left knee for leverage. And then step your right foot back so it's in line with your right. Same thing, other side. Nice. Feel free to sway your hips from side to side. Notice what your arms are doing. Try to wrap your armpits in towards your heart. And in anything we do today, to feel free to find some sort of sway or circle or anything, wiggle and anything. And then step your left foot back to meet your right. Come into your downward facing dog again. On your next inhale, bring your body forward and through to a plank pose, measure it out. And then let your hips drop a bit to come into your tuck toed up dog. Bend the knees, stick the butt up downward facing dog. One more time, just like that, plank pose. Let the hips drop. And then bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. This time rolling through and come straight into your up dog on your inhale. And as you exhale, bend the knees, stick the butt up. One more on your own breath. However you're breathing, notice your speed. And then once you get to the top, feel free to pedal it out again. On your next inhale, bring your body forward and through to your plank pose, bending your elbows in towards your torso, lower yourself down onto the mat. From here, untuck the toes, take a few wiggles side to side with your hips. Hands will, hands are currently underneath your shoulders still. And then bring them out onto the ground outside of your mat and come up onto your fingertips like we did in that one all fours thing. Elbows are facing up towards the ceiling. And as you inhale, you're gonna lift your chest, neck, head, doesn't matter how high you go. It's our first version of a back bend. And exhale, bring your body back down, noticing the opening in the shoulders. Inhale, bring your chest, neck, head up. Exhale, come back down. Tops of the feet still pressing down, but is slightly engaged. Try not to tense your jaw or anything. And take this a few more times on your own beginning to open up the shoulders and creating space there. Awesome. And on your next one, inhale, bring yourself up. And from here, this is gonna look kind of weird, but just take like any circles around to the right and left with your torso, letting a shoulder come forward. I don't even know what this looks like, probably some like gargoyle type thing, I don't know, or a cat. But just take circles to the right and left and this really is gonna help in, help and lubricate the shoulders. And it really doesn't matter what it looks like. Cool. On your next inhale, just lower yourself back down. Forehead comes to the ground. Hands are gonna come to your lower back palms face up, and then just let your elbows drop down wherever they go towards the ground. If this is uncomfortable on your forehead, you can always put one cheek to the ground. 
but just breathe. Letting that all settle. Still imagining the wind passing over view. You have a nice breeze, encouraging the energy to flow through your body. On your next inhale, place your hands back underneath your shoulders. Bring your toes together. Tuck your toes so your legs are all the way together. And then press yourself back to toe breaker, our favorite thing. So someone told me this week that this was getting easier for them. So I thought we should do it then. <laughs> but from here, once again, take a roll with your shoulders forward and back. We're gonna get into the shoulders today and really just loosen them up. Nice. Find yourself on your heels. You can untuck your pinky toe if you didn't do that already. Hands come face down on your lap and close your eyes. So here, try to imagine a, a happy place of sorts, maybe the place you wanna go or travel to when everything is open, whether that's a beach, skiing, hiking, sailing, anything. And just imagine yourself there, sitting there, your feet feeling beautifully opened. Relax your shoulders, relax your jaw. Feeling that breeze, imagining it passing over you. And then exhale, open your eyes, place your hands down in front of you, untuck your toes. And then if you have your blocks nearby, I don't, so I'm not gonna move to get them, but if they are nearby, you can put your hands on blocks here by your hips, or you can just lift your knees up with your hands by your hips on fingertips. And see if you, during class today, can like try to find more moments of being on your fingertips just to see what it feels like. Taking rocks back on your heels to open up the fronts of the ankles, opening up the shins, doesn't matter how far you go. And last one, bring your hands back forward, walk them out to where you would wanna come into your downward facing dog. Keep your toes tucked like this and see how far you can go without screaming or being in pain, but Keeping them tucked, lift up your legs and come into your downward facing dog. Knees can still be bent. We won't be here for that long. Notice what it feels like to really get that opening on the fronts of the feet. Bend the knees, stick the butt up, and then tuck your toes back. So keep your feet together. You're still in a more narrow stance of a down dog, but your feet are not tucked anymore, so it'll feel nicer. Bend the knees, stick the butt up again. Feel free to take a few rocks side to side or forward and back. And then on your next inhale, have both heels go to the right again. Find that same rainbow position. Chin comes underneath your armpit. Look to the left. Come back to center. Other side rainbow. And this also really doesn't matter what it looks like. It's more about the imagination and how you feel. Come back to center. Awesome. Finding your down dog. Inhale, bring your body forward and through, upward facing dog. Exhale, bend the knees, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, you're gonna come forward and through to a plank pose. Lift your right leg up. And then five times, we're gonna bring our right knee to our right tricep, right knee to our nose, right knee to our left tricep, and then extend it back. So you only have four more. Go as fast or as slow as you want. Obviously, if you go faster, it'll be over quicker, which is nice. Keeping your hips square, looking down and out. Try not to look down and back behind you. And after you finish your fifth one, come into your low lunge. Nice. Once you're in your low lunge, just find your form, knee over ankle. And if you're boxing your body, I recommend grabbing them. They can be on any height you want. High, medium, lower. Place your back knee down, unduck the back toes, and we're immediately gonna come to that flow that we 
do quite often, where you straighten your right leg, lift the right toes up, exhale, bend the knee, low lunge, inhale, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, straighten both legs, exhale, low lunge. And keep going like that at whatever pace you want, but just really imagining, I'm almost imagining like the scenes in Pocahontas where she's just dancing around and like jumping along the water. I wish that could be me, but instead we're imagining it and doing yoga, which is almost as good, maybe better. Take one more round and then let's all meet back in our lunge. Back knee down still. Bring your right hand and place it on the inside of the right foot and then heel toe your foot out to the right so it's slightly turned out and you're bisecting the mat. Knee is still tracking over toes on that diagonal. Hands are underneath your shoulders and we're gonna take the flow here. So lift your toes up, but straighten your right leg. Exhale, low lunge. Tuck the back toes with the back knee and straighten both legs here. So this just gets another part of the hamstring. Just feels a little bit different, but still very nice. Still thinking about the back leg, keeping you stable. Shoulders down, place the back knee down. And feel free to close your eyes during this and really get into it, imagining wherever you are, feeling the energy moving in circles and all these different flows that we do. One more, and then we'll all meet in center. Then you're gonna move your right block over to the right, heel toe your right foot all the way over to the left block and maybe even move the left block a little bit more. So now you have this like weird cross lunge. So it's strange, but it's fine. Just really make sure your knee is still on top of your ankle and tracking over the toes. On your next inhale, pick the right toes up, straighten it, bend the right knee, low lunge, tuck the back toes at the back knee, cross, exhale, low lunge. Yeah. So try to keep your hips square here. That'll really get this third part of our hamstring. Keeping your gaze down and out. And just keep breathing. Find your breath. Notice if your mind is wandering off to something other than your imaginatory nature winds place. Take one more round. And then coming back into the low lunge, move the blocks off to the side, come back down onto your hands, tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and then step your right foot back in front of your left. So we're coming into a cross-legged down dog. Bend the knees, stick your butt up. Cool. Feel free to take any sways or wiggles here too. And then on your next inhale, same rainbow thing. Bring both heels over to the right, rainbow it up. One more breath. Come back to center. Both knees come up and over to the left. Well, oh, that's hard. Doesn't matter how far you move. And then come back to center. On your next inhale, bring your body forward and through to a cross-legged tuck, toed up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice. On your next inhale, come back into your plank pose. So don't need to be cross-legged here. You can uncross your legs and come back into your plank pose. Lifting your left leg up, same thing on this side, left tricep, nose, right tricep, back. Four more times at whatever speed. Imagine that your left foot is pressing up against the wall Try not to show much strain in your face. And after you finish your fifth one, you'll come into your low lunge. Nice. Find your measure, 
find yourself here, take any sways. Place your back knee down, untuck the back toes. Finding your blocks again at any height that you want. Inhale, tuck the toes up, straighten the left leg. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, tuck the toes, straighten both legs. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, tuck the toes. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, straighten. And find your breath. Your breath can be like the gusts of wind. Just noticing it, feeling it. Imagining that fan might be building a little bit of heat. So a fan might actually be nice to turn on. I do not have one, so that's fine. Take one more round and then meet back in our little lunge. Same thing on this side. Left hand comes inside of the left foot. Heel toe your left foot out over to the left. So it bisects the back. Knee tracking over toes. Find your hands underneath your shoulders on your blocks. Inhale, lift the left toes up. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, straighten both legs. Exhale, low lunge. And feel free to pause anywhere that feels nice. These might be some new sensations. And if you're like, whoa, I love this. Feel free to pause it. You don't need to go through the whole flow the whole time. Notice any snap crackles or pops that happen. But try to keep your gaze forward and out. Still looking forward to our future and our potential allowing the wind to help push us there. Cool, one more. You'll finish this next round. And then same thing, left foot, left hand comes back on the outside of the left foot. Left foot heel toes over to the right hand. Find your hands underneath your shoulders and then straighten the left toes or straighten the left leg, lift the left toes up, cross-legged thing. Straighten both legs. Inhaling and exhaling at your own pace. And it's nice to find a moment somewhere where you can hold and really see if you can find the right measure of your hips being square or something like that. So it's always good to slow it down. Keep breathing. Another thing that I've been thinking about a lot is how it's important for the energy to flow because it keeps things fresh. So us moving through these flows and like letting our bodies just take any wiggles or sways that it wants are kind of like letting our bodies be a waterfall or a river that's constantly moving instead of a stagnant pond that has all those flies like I don't know, just flying over it. So we want to keep things moving. We want to have that fresh new blood and oxygen moving through us. Take one more round. And then we'll meet back in the low lunge. Let your hands come off to the side or blocks come off to the side. Tuck your back toes, lift the back knee, cross-legged downward facing dog. This time, Right knee is pushing into the back of the left knee. Feet are still at hips with distance. Take any wiggles you want. Once again, taking into our rainbows, heels up and over to the right. Ooh, if you don't move anywhere like I did, that's all good. Chin come up into left armpit. Come back to center. Inhale, heels come over to the left. Come back to center. Inhale, body forward and through, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. On your next inhale, you're gonna take a hop with your legs and have them land so they're as wide as the mat. Boom. So you're kind of in a really wide-legged downward facing dog. Still find your knees bent. Take any movement, feels good. Bending into the knees, noticing the difference of how your legs feel from the first down dog or from having your feet together or wide in a down dog. 
and then begin to walk your hands back, coming over your legs in a wide legged forward fold. Let your head just shake out yes and no here. Really just let it all dangle like a leaf blowing through the wind. <laughs> Great. From here, you're gonna grab the front of the left ankle with your right hand and the front of the, yeah, the front of the right ankle with your left hand. Inhale, extend your spine out and then exhale, bend your elbows and fold over. So still have a slight bend in your knees. Really let your head just drop. See if you can bend your elbows a little bit more to bring your chest forward and down. And just breathe, find your breath. On your next inhale, you're gonna lift your right arm up, spin your body open to the right and swim it back down. Grab onto the front of the ankle again. Inhale, lift your left arm up, open to the left. Swim it back down, crossing over to back to the ankle. And just keep going like this, taking these swims. We're all gonna wanna go to a pool or something after this. <laughs> Take a few more, trying to follow your hand if you can, really getting your whole upper body involved. But keeping your hips square, imagining they're pressing into a wall behind you. Once you evened it out, take your last one to the left. And then once again, just let your arms, head dangle, let it all go. On your next inhale, roll your body up, coming up to stand as slow as you can, stacking your body like Jenga blocks, one on top of the other. And then when you get to the top, shake it out, roll anything out. And then find your feet back in hips width distance. So we're gonna take a few swings with our arms. Feel free to watch me do this um, first and then feel free to join in whenever. But we're gonna lift our arms up, swing them down, come into your forward fold, interlace your hands behind your back. Let that arm structure come over your head. Breathe here. Exhale, let that go. Roll your body up and then do it again. Arms up, swing them back down, interlace the weird way. Inhale, exhale here. Let that go and roll your body up. And we'll just keep doing that. I actually used to do something like this in a dance class that I did. So welcome to Horton 101. <laughs> let it go. And listen to your breath, really just letting your body swing over your legs, waking yourself up at whatever speed feels good for you. And find the inhales and exhales as you inhale, lifting your arms up, exhale as you let your arms go, letting it be a little bit cathartic. Feel free to let out a big sigh. Everyone take one more and then we'll all meet standing. Great. Once you're standing, close your eyes again, finding yourself on two feet, hands down by your sides, palms facing forward, shoulders down away from the ears, chin is parallel to the ground. I'm taking a few sways forward and back and side to side really to try to find the midpoint between my feet. Feel free to try it. And it's okay if you feel like you keep moving today. Even in the poses where we're still, there's still some energy or some movement happening. Just like if you really go deep down into like the microscopic atoms that exist, there's always something moving there. We just can't see it. So find the four corners of your feet. Imagine that that fan is in front of you, blowing on you.
On your next inhale, lift your arms up, press palms together overhead to look up, and then forward fold over your legs. Awesome. From here, walk yourself back out into your downward facing dog. Feel free to keep taking any pedals, anything that you want here, any shakes, whatever. On your next inhale, bring your body forward and through, upward facing dog. Bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Cool. Find your breath here. Feel free to take some sighs again, inhaling through the nose, Sighing out the mouth, you can flutter through your lips to really just let it out. <sighs> Palms press down, armpits in towards the heart, knees slightly bent, heels coming down, butt coming up. And then bend your knees, place your knees down on the ground, untuck the toes, and then sit on your heels and come into seed pose. So the difference between seed pose and child's pose is that your hands are cupping on your heels and if your forehead doesn't touch the ground, it's like totally fine. You look like you're a little seed, but if your forehead does touch the ground, also great, but you're in this little seed thing. Take a few breaths here. You're super small and contained. You've done a lot of flowing around. So feel free to take a moment to just chill. Awesome. And we're gonna come into another flowy thing. Sorry, you signed up for a dance class today. Um, but as you inhale, feel free to watch me do the first round. You're gonna inhale, bring your hands behind you like you did when we were lifting up our knees, but this time don't lift up your knees. Walk them back, take a little arch with your back, and then walk your hands back forward and down, coming into a child's pose. Then bring your body forward and through to an upward facing dog. Tuck the toes, lift the knees, bend the knees, stick your butt up, downward facing dog. Repeat it. Come back into your seed pose. Inhale, walk your hands back, arch your back. And take this on your own breath. You don't need to listen to whatever the cues are. Coming through to your upward dog. Then tuck the toes, lift the knees, bend the knees, butt up, down dog. Come back into your seat pose. So really feel the circuitous movement happening here because you're really moving through that circle, starting and ending in the same place. And if you're overdoing these flows, feel free to just hang out in a child's pose. And also you can try going a little bit faster and see what that feels like. Really letting gravity in your body, just making you move through the flows and the flow. Finding your center of balance that keeps you steady here. And it's okay if it looks a little bit messy. Yoga is not perfect, it's a practice. It's not meant to be a performance, so whatever it looks like is amazing. Take a few more rounds, try out a different speed, try out a different length of wherever you go, hold something longer. Try a straight-legged down dog, what a concept. Feel free to hang out in your seed pose for longer and really play around with it and just find what feels good. You can hold the back bend. And then once you've finished your next round, come back to your seed pose. Take a few breaths just to let that all settle. Imagining that there was a shining arrow following you through that whole thing. And you could see this circle being drawn. From here, you're gonna widen your knees out so they're as wide as the mat. 
and come back into a wide knee child's pose. So take up some space here, let your arms come straight out. Rock your forehead side to side, try to keep that movement flowing through the body. And on your next inhale, you're gonna lift yourself up and walk your hands up and over to the right. Sitting back down with your butt towards your heels. Keep breathing. And then sitting up and walking. Your hands up and over to the left. Sitting your butt back towards your heels, really opening up the rainbow line of the right side. Awesome. Walk your hands back to center. Walk them back out as far as you can. Look out, get that really long length in your arms. Place your hands down. Instead of bringing your knees in towards your feet, just open your feet out so they're aligned with your knees and then tuck your toes, lift your knees, downward facing dog. So coming back to that wide legged down dog. Taking the rainbows here, inhale, lift your heels up and over to the right, tuck yourself, lift your hips up and then come back to center, hips up and over to the left and then come back to center. Bring your feet back, tips with distance, pedal it out, do whatever you need, and then continue that connection. Walk your feet in towards one another. On your next inhale, bring your body forward and through to a plank pose, and then we're coming into our side plank. So come on the outer edge of the right foot, right hand is pressing down, lift your left arm up, opening yourself up. And then once again, kick the hips up, imagining you're making a rainbow with your body and imagining that you're turning a stereo dial up to the right with your right hand. Looking out in front of you, one more breath. And then spin that back down, hands come underneath shoulders, tuck toed up dog, bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Feet come back together. Once again, other side, come to your plank pose, then come into your side plank, lift your right arm up, stick the hips up. So we don't want them down, we want them super up. So you're really in this rainbow-like thing. And if you don't wanna be here, feel free to come into a modified side plank like we sometimes do in the beginning. One more breath, and then spin that back down and over, come into your plank pose, Tuck toe up dog, bend the knees, stick the butt up, downward facing dog. Wonderful, pedal it out, find your breath. On your next inhale, lift your right leg up, down dog split, bend the knee and open up the hip and take any movements that you want there. Notice what your shoulders are doing, shaking it out. Straighten the leg and then bring your right knee right behind your right wrist for pigeon. So pigeon means we're coming to the end of anything super difficult in terms of flowing around. Um, if you have a blanket nearby, you can place that underneath your hips at any height. And if pigeon isn't working for you, feel free to come down on your back and hug that figure four into, your, into yourself. Untuck the toes finding yourself seated up. And since we all have some sort of block thing with us today, you're gonna to find one block on the medium height, bring that in towards the middle of your shin, and then find your other block, make it like a T, place it out and then lift up and then walk your torso over the blocks. And then feel free to move around the blocks however you need to find comfort. And then let everything settle and come down. It's always nice having scaffolding or something holding you up. It relieves the pressure of having to hold things up yourself, which is why having blocks underneath your chest or your head is so nice. And if you don't have blocks, you could also use a pillow here. 
whatever feels good. Just getting into the hips. We haven't done much hip stuff today. We'll be here for a bit, so just find your breath. Coming back to your happy place where the wind is blowing. You can feel the same energy coursing through your body. Letting all of the different flows that we did today settle. And if you really liked one of them, you can always just do that alone. Anytime your body feels like it needs to wake up. Keep breathing, letting your breath settle and soften, softening your face, making your elbows a little bit wider to release the shoulders. And find a few more breaths here. On your next inhale, using your hands, begin to bring your torso up. Move the blocks off to the side. You can keep the blanket there because we'll come right back into this. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee, and bring yourself back into a downward facing dog. Keep pedaling. Notice how which leg, notice how the legs feel. And then on your next inhale, Lift your left leg up, down dog split, bend the knee, open up the hip. Circle it around. Listen to any pops that happen. You can place it on a wall if you're close to a wall. And then straighten it out and bring your left knee behind your left wrist. Moving around the blanket as you need. The side might be tighter or more open. And then once again, find the blocks one, coming vertically right under your sternum and one horizontally, which will go under your forehead. Lifting yourself up and then walk yourself over your blocks. Move them around, make a diamond shape with your arms. And you can also still find some sways here or wiggles if that helps. Stay in this position. Closing your eyes, finding your breath. Letting your body melt into the ground. As you exhale, try to release any excess tension and really let gravity help you settle. Like your sand settling to the bottom of a river. Rock your forehead side to side, giving it a little massage. Keep breathing. Take a few more breaths here. And on your next inhale, begin to walk yourself up. Torso comes up, blocks move away. Tuck the back toes with the back knee and then bring yourself into your downward facing dog. 
This is your last down dog. Can you believe it? So take any movement that you want. Maybe trying those rainbows again. Whatever feels good. And then place your knees down. Come to sit on your heels for a second. And then if you have a blanket or a block, you can use either one for one of these things. We're gonna take a little um, back bend thing. So if you have a blanket, try to find it in like a rectangular shape. And then you're gonna roll it up like a burrito. And if you have a block, you can try it on the medium height. And then if that feels like it's too much, then you can put it on the lower height, whatever you have. So I'll start with the blanket first. So you come here with your blanket, you can put it up like almost two thirds up the mat. And then you're gonna sit on your hips, feet down, knees bent and then roll yourself back down. So you lie back on the blanket right where your shoulder blades are. And if you're like, okay, I wanna try the block. <laughs> you can do the same thing, place the block down and then come wiggle yourself down and let your head come down to touch the ground. Feet can stay bent and then if you want, you can lengthen them out wherever you are. So just depending what props are available to you at home. You could also do this on a pillow or something or roll up a pair of sweatpants. You can really do anything with what you have. You could even lie back on like a rolling pin or something. But really letting the shoulders drop away from the ears, let them relax. Notice if you are holding any tension there. Close your eyes. Relaxing into this back bend, encouraging us to move forward and out, encouraging us to stop hunching over our phones or our computers. Take a few more breaths. And just notice what this brings up for you, where your mind goes might be different than what happens in a pigeon pose because a pigeon is more of a forward fold and this is like a back bend. So just notice what happens to your mind, your body and your breath. On your next inhale, you're gonna bring your elbows underneath kind of your, where your shoulders are and just use that to press yourself up. If you're on the blanket, you can just pull it out. We're gonna come back down into constructive rest. So feet as wide as the mat, knees bent, knees knock in towards one another. Constructive rest, hands on your belly. Try to feel the breath go all the way down into your low belly and relax your shoulders down. You can rock your head from right to left. Knees can windshield wiper side to side. And you can also find stillness. On your next inhale, you're gonna find your feet underneath your knees again and hug your right knee in towards your chest. Straighten out your left leg and bring it a little bit over to the right. And then you sh should maybe hopefully have this block that you just used in arms length, or you can also use your blanket for this, but bring your right knee over to the left and then place it on top of the block at any height. If you feel like you can touch the ground, Feel free to do that, but I know I can't, so I'm gonna place it on a block. The priority here is to keep the right shoulder down. So you want that to touch the ground, but you have a really nice twist here. Imagine that someone is pressing down on the top of the right knee and your right shoulder at the same time, spreading them out, 
pulling them away like it's silly putty. Your eyes can come to a close. Find your breath. One more cycle of breath here. And then come back to center. Hug both knees in towards your chest, one hand on each knee, and just circle them around in any direction. Rocking yourself side to side, up and down. Hug your left knee in towards your chest, straight in the right. Bring your right leg over to the left a bit. Use your hands to move the block to the other side. Oops. And then cross your left knee over to the right, place it on a block, find it underneath your knee, finagle it all around. And then left arm out to a T or a cactus, left shoulder comes down to the ground, looking over your left shoulder. Finding things slowing down. We spend a lot of time moving pretty quickly through the flows and the movement, building heat. Now it's the time to just imagine you're chilling on the beach, letting the breeze just wash over you. One more breath. And then come back to center. Hug both knees in towards your chest again. Take some circles. And then come into happy baby for a hot sec, grabbing your knees, shins, ankles, or outsides of the feet. Bring your knees in towards your armpits. Whole lower back is on the ground. So if you're lifting up, then just don't go as far. Grab onto something else. Sticking your butt out a little bit. And then you can rock from side to side here, still keeping your eyes closed, thinking inward, thinking of the energy moving through your body. You can straighten the leg or anything. Great. And then from there, you can take a few versions of Shavasana. So I'll give you your options. You can either take normal Shavasana, which is awesome. You can take your block on its lowest height, bring your knees bent, place your, low, place your block on the lowest height underneath your lower back, and you can rest like this, potentially straightening out the legs, or you can also sit back up and do the good old arms out, palms down, interlace your hands, and then lie back on this. So whichever way, you can also bring the blanket, put it where you think your knees will be, place it underneath your knees, and then lie back down. It's up to you. I'm gonna interlace my hands because my shoulders have been super tight recently, but we'll lie here for a few minutes and really just let everything settle here. Exhaling out any tension or excess holding of any body part. The beginning of class was almost like a flushing of all of the energy we moved through all parts of our body circling around everything. And now we get to rest and just let all of the dust settle. Find your eyes closed. Every variation of Savasana you took. Have your mind follow your breath. Staying in the moment. 
But if your mind wanders off somewhere, just notice it and then come back, it's no big deal. Listening to your breath, feeling it like a wave, allowing your energy to move, and then wherever you are, if you have your hands underneath you or you're on the block, lift your butt up just enough to move your hands or the block out after your knees are bent and feet are on the floor, and then bring your arms out, bring the block out, come down. Constructive rest for a hot second, and then you're in Shavasana. You can also come to constructive rest. If your feet are on a blanket, that's totally fine. And then on your next inhale, you're gonna roll over onto your right side. Coming into fetal position, take a breath in. And then when you're ready, bring yourself up to sit. Don't need to sit on anything, just sit up tall. Shoulders down, back tall, sitting on both sits bones equally. Palms can be face down or face up, eyes are still closed. Listening to your breath. Palms can come to press at heart center. Gratitude to our bodies for being able to move all around and do all they do to let the energy flow both outwardly and inwardly. And gratitude to being able to practice all together. One practice with the final bow. Namaste. Amazing.